I am a very traditional teacher. That was the way I was taught and trained in college, and I'm really working hard to become more student-centered. I need to learn to back off and let them take charge. And it's, it's hard on me. After all these years, I have to change because technology is changing everything. Some of the practices that were more traditional, that are more kind of teacher-led, may not be the best way for all, all kids to learn. It was a little difficult for me to let go and realize that I can still have a lot of control in my class, in the groups. Letting go of traditional practices is not easy. Teachers have to feel safe and comfortable and have a supportive environment before they can try new things in their classroom. The kids have learned very quickly how to share, how to work together. They help one another, and that's nice to see. I am able to become more of a facilitator of my children's learning, and they're becoming more interactive with me. I am no longer the focus of everything. What is happening now, the focus. A lot of their learning I'm placing on the students. And I'm so impressed with them. I'll give them the problem, I'll lead them, and then they're on their own. And they discover all kinds of neat things on the way. Student-centered learning, to me, is having the students take charge. I really dwell on their prior experience, their prior knowledge. They take that ball and run with it. They develop their own idea. They take control of that learning. Connecting new information with what students already know, with what they bring into the classroom, and folding that information into authentic student projects can be a radical departure from what teachers traditionally do. Y'all know some things about things that float and things that sink. In your groups, I want y'all to really brainstorm and decide what you know about things that float. It could be about things in your pools. It could be about things that you've seen at the beach. Mama sometimes floats in the water and she throws them in there. And um, they contain a lot of air. So they'll float. A beach ball floats because it's light and it's soft. Styrofoam, like the... Uh, hey, it's compared with air. I threw it in a pool. In a pool? And it, it was air. Because mm -hmm. okay. they have air in them, so they don't float. But if they don't have air, they have all the So y'all have done your research. Now you're going to have to make a hypothesis. Do you think that clay will float? If you think it will, you have to tell me whether you think they could carry more than their own weight. The clay is heavy. Yeah. But if you like mold it like a lot and you play with it, it'll get like thin eventually. But I mean, it still might sink because it's like thick clay. And the same thing with foil. Do you think foil can float? Do you think that it can carry more than its weight? I think that aluminum foil will float because it's like thin. Eventually, it's, it's still going to sink, but the, the aluminum foil, when we put the little box on and stuff. And y'all don't have to agree on it. If you don't agree with your group members, you can put your own hypothesis. So the clay is going to sink. sink. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe it might stay in the middle. So I don't know when it's going to float. Before last year, I probably would have just used a book. I don't think I would have felt very comfortable doing activities with the students at that time grouping. I may have attempted one activity or two, but now I feel a little bit more comfortable with it. Just because I see the kids enjoying it a lot more than I did a few years ago when I was teaching from the book. When you put like some of the strength, you like Yeah. Well, yeah, and you put those together and you can fold it in and so out like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now look, pick up a little piece of that, see the whole little piece, and it's your see that close. Just see how it looks. I'm going to give you a go. Oh, it's not comfortable. And then you have to wash it on the feet. So.
Okay, there's two so far. And okay, it holds four. The fifth big one is six. We put three small washers in there. And then we put two big ones, and the second big one that we put in made the boat sink. Just as it's important to bring students' prior knowledge into the classroom for their learning, it's important to build on what teachers already know in professional development experiences. One thing is getting teachers to share what they are bringing in and build from the knowledge base that they have. Let them share that and then provide opportunities throughout all of our sessions so that they continue to be able to share their experience and work with each other. We will provide lots of hands-on time, but then also we'll, we'll stop and have some time for reflection to really talk about the difficulties they may be having in making that transition to a student-centered classroom. What we try to do with our staff development is set up situations where the uh, participant in the activity is an active learner so that they get the, the feeling of being a student. I was one of the mentors. And so I got to go on the computer and actually learn the program. And then I had to bring my group over and show them how to use the computer. I had to verbally explain who the person I was working with. It was very difficult for me because I wanted just to grab the mouse and do it myself. I'm not as computer literate as Cayenne. And every time I have a problem, I go straight to her. I say, Cayenne, I did something wrong here. Help me. It's good that we have Cayenne. So I had to really put myself in their place. If they were going to learn how to use it, they had to have their hands on it, and they actually had to, to do it themselves. We model the role of a teacher and as someone who manages the structure but provides an environment where learning can occur on its own and where students have, in this case, teachers have the ability to inquire and learn at their own pace. Once that's occurred, we can go back and we can look at it and say, okay, this is what happened with you as a learner. How do you think that would translate for your students? I went through a program that put me in as a learner, and I realized that all I was doing was modeling and they were spitting back information and that there wasn't a lot of learning going on. It is a risk. They're taking a risk in changing their practice. So they need the support of other teachers, of the principal. It was going to be a supportive process. It wasn't going to be that you have to do it. It was going to be, we need for you to start working with this. You have this entire year of constant support. We just want to see what you're doing. We want you to try it. We want you to play with it, experiment with it. We've really worked very hard to create a very non-threatening environment for them to begin to do this. I think that this program has also helped um, us to work together as teachers, even across the curriculum. And more of the teachers are getting together and asking each other, well, do you all need help with this? Do you need help with that? And it's really helping us out a lot. And I think it's helping all of the teachers out. They're very willing to share ideas, things they've tried, things that have worked and not worked. Somebody will say, oh, I didn't know you were doing that. And next year, I can do my language arts project with that. Or we could use that in a history class. And it really is a cross-fertilization of ideas. When we did deserts, we share by putting it up in the hallway and everything. But now with the computer, we can share each other's work just by clicking, by going there. After we did the training, I kind of had the feeling that we're all working together and we all have the same ideas and philosophies about where we want our children to be by the time they leave the elementary program. There's a lot of, of teachers matching up with each other in their classes and teachers teaming up. This would be an excellent opportunity the next year also to start teaming up teachers, those that have had that one year of sequel experience with people that have not and start that teaming process and mentoring process. The excitement, the happiness that they have, what I'm hoping for them to accomplish is that this will go to the other classes, the other teachers that have not experienced the training that they have. The staff development we're providing shows the teachers how they can use the computer with their students in a way that fits in with their classroom so it's not separate from what they're doing normally. For the teacher making the transition from the traditional teacher-centered classroom to the student-centered classroom, technology adds another element that has to be learned. In our professional development, we really encourage them to try a lot of things mm -hmm. and to fail if they have to. We, we don't make judgments about if they can't do it perfectly. We encourage them constantly. I appreciate you allowing us just to have time. And I think a lot of times we don't let the kids have time just to play and get used to it. We're, we expect them to go and produce something right away. And we need to really take that into account. I have always wanted to see my classroom with the computers integrated. 
but I never knew how. My kids were questioning me. They wanted to know what they were going to be doing on the computer. And I thought, my goodness, there is so much that these students can learn with technology. How can I limit my students from learning that? The technology is useless without the training. As they got involved with it, as they became more familiar, the excitement seemed to grow with the ability to use the technology they had. All of a sudden, they started branching out into group studies, started using more of the computers in there, letting the kids get involved. I was at first a little apprehensive about the way the computer technology would play into a constructivist classroom, but what I've noticed is it's enhanced my students' learning and ability, and the ability for my students to use computer technology to further their own thoughts and their ideas has been a positive for them. We wanted software that the students were actually going to have to sit there and think about what they were doing, plan how they were going to do it, and then figure out how they were going to implement it. To us, that seemed more important because that developed their critical thinking skills, which is what we're basically here for. It's not just the technology, it's the way you teach. It's the student-centered learning. It's going back to prior knowledge. This is the way students learn the best. And this technology is just that tool that's helping this happen. We came up basically with the idea of encouraging the teachers to begin making a change over from utilizing the technology for drill and kill repetition type work to actually integrating it with what they were doing in the class. We did a fanatic unit on Native Americans. We had the students do research on a specific Indian group in their cooperative groups. And then from that point, I had each group create a slideshow from their questions. They made jewelry from silver and turquoise. They made rugs from sheep's wool. They made sand paintings. We were studying about the Seminole Indians. The Seminole home was called a chicky. The chickies were platforms with open sides and thatched roof. The Navajo was the white settlers wanted the Navajo land. The Navajos fought to get their land back. They were made prisoners and were forced to walk more than 300 miles. Thank you for watching and listening. This is the end of my presentation. Instead of the teacher owning the learning, they turn it over to the students in the classroom. Students get more engaged because they are learning and they own what they're learning. We're writing a newspaper and we're writing a report on the teacher at the hall and we collect information and then we're writing it to a story. And then it's going to be revised by the teacher and us. Then we have to type it on the computer. We have to um, write lots of stories so we could have a big newspaper. We went to interview the cafeteria manager. We asked the questions and we wrote it down. When we came back to the class, we expanded the questions and we're going to make a story about it. We're going to put it in our um, news article, our newspaper article, and it's going to go around the whole school and the community. We're a community in here. We set up the tone from the very beginning. You that's respect so, yourself. Great. It is so easy to respect other people and you respect yourself because you have pride in who you are. Chores. You guys have chores? Yeah, I know that one. Yeah. I'd take out the trash and take out the mail. I wonder what he had to do. I'd like to know. My boys and girls are writing uh, stories for the newspaper, and I will sit down with the reporters and I'll say, okay, who do you want to interview? I'll say, okay, that's fine with me. Just write the questions, you know, and, and prepare to uh, work with me, and then go ask your questions. What if he was a reporter? <laughs> ah, let's find out. What game did you play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's right. Okay. What did you study at school? Oh, no, no. Okay. Yeah. Did you ever get in trouble? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to agree that my students are well behaved. You know, and I'm very proud of that. I say that very proudly. And I tell them often that I love them. And I say that very openly that I love them. And sometimes I will say, I love you, but I'm still going to make you do as I ask you to do if I know you're doing wrong. And how did you spend your money? Oh, those are important questions, I think. What do you think? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. Okay. But I would say, if, if you don't want to use it, you don't have to. It's totally up to you. And they come to school thinking anyway because I tell them they come with their five senses. So you already bring a lot with you. They love talking anyway. So I try to enhance what they already have. And if you can talk to me, you can talk to anyone with enough practice. I'm Ed. I am. Uh, my name is Jonathan Emmenhoff, and I'm a report and I'm a reporter from Miss Malone's class. Uh, we were sort of like scared because we didn't know what we were gonna say at first. Miss Malone really helped us a lot. And I want to interview. Is this a good time? 
Yes, but you need to show us what what you're doing. She let us practice outside for about 20 minutes. And she set us outside to go to interview one of them teachers. And we came back with a whole lot of information. So when you go out on an interview, greet the person you're going to talk to. Let them know who you are. You look at people when you talk to them. And you speak with confidence. Let them know that you're not afraid to speak because it's all about you. You're very important. You have a lot of pride. You have a lot you want to share. And uh, just one way to enhance the writing skills. Fun way. And they don't see it as work. Hi, my name is Jonathan and I'm from the Heart Rocket Express Club. Can I interview you? Yes. I said, are we going to have a copy of this? I said, yeah, you always have a copy. You're right. They said, is anyone else in the school going to have a copy? So I said, probably, but I'm not sure how many copies we need to make. Well, let's sell them. I said, well, for how much? And it's like 25 or 30 cents. I'm not sure how much we're going to sell them for. It's going to get to them, too. They wrote it. It's theirs. They own it. And they can decide. He asked us if he could edit it and um, if he could look at it before we print it into the newspaper. And we said no, and he had to read it in the newspaper when it came out. If you have one to four computers in the classroom and the children are going to be using them for educational curriculum purposes. All the children can't be doing the same thing at the same time. The teacher is going to need to change the structure of her classroom. So it's up to you to divide your time among your three activities. You could be working on the rewrite, you could be doing literature circles. What happens if uh, you decide you want to do one by yourself different from the group? Is that okay? Yes, it is. Uh, the classrooms, we, oh, we are always do this work and stuff, and this, we get to work in groups and do activities on the computer. Our teacher seems to give us more responsibility. She leaves it up, up to us to get our work done, and she, she really doesn't check it till the end. And we have our own responsibility when to turn it in and what time we have to do it. I've used computers in my classroom. One of the centers to broaden my students' own thinking, and they've been able to utilize it more as a tool and a resource to further their own knowledge and information base. We've been using inspiration, just really getting started with it this past month, and I saw great possibilities for generating organizational materials for the kids because they have so much difficulty keeping track of who did what, when, where, why. And I've instructed two or three of them on how to use the program, and they in turn taught two or three. Students take on new roles. You have peer tutoring or mentoring going on in the classroom. You want to change your cup? Yeah. Like this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Make some more bubbles like this. Like this. Or you can do these and like go like this. How do you change it to like look like the small pieces and Oh, so this is the all sport section. See? When the students help me out in the computer, it doesn't only help me, but it helps them in the self esteem because they feel they can do the work that I do. So they're happy to go in and help other students. The kids really seem to like it a lot better teaching one another. They do seem to get more out of it. Ironically, they always know more than I do about the whole program. So within five minutes, they've pretty much mastered it and gone on and dusted me. I'm doing inspiration on the computer with our social studies work. Zeros are like links. They help uh, they tell you, like, this is chapter seven. It's easy to study because, like, you have your own personal notes. You don't have to keep track of everything that you have to write in class. You just make your own little specific notes mm -hmm. that you need. The perks are is that they really do seem to get more out of I it, and more than you even realize that they're getting out of it, like, because they seem to have more control. Although the roles of the teacher and the students mm -hmm. change in a student-centered classroom, the teacher is always essential. Teachers become partners with students in the creative process. Mente. ¿Dónde está lo más poderoso cuando estás escribiendo una historia? Mente. En tu mente, tu imaginación. Ah, tu imaginación es la que te va a crear a que hagas la historia a tu manera. Que tu historia va a ser igual que otra. No. Va a ser única, ¿verdad? Va a ser única tu historia. Bueno, lo que quiere hacer mi sueño ahorita. ¿Quién cree que ya está listo para ir a la, a la campina a empezar a escribir? I feel very much that you learn by by putting your hands on something and letting all that knowledge just kind of like ooze up into your creative area and your imagination starts flowing. Entonces, cuando ustedes acaben su historia, van a poder sentarse aquí y luego otra vez con tu mente querer crear una situación 
de, de arte, como ustedes que están hablando de, de Tlaloc y Quetzalcóatl, van a tener la oportunidad de hacer un proyecto ya sea de clay o con beads. ¿Quieren que les dé un ejemplo cómo pueden usar una de estas cosas? Bueno, vamos a, hacer, a suponer que una de tus historias decía que Lalo quería que toda la gente tuviera un día festivo. Para hacerlo más festivo, es lo que podría hacer crear una lluvia que cayera en muchos colores. Y se te hace que la gente estuviera alegre. Mamá. Si cayera la lluvia del cielo en muchos colores. Sí. Esa es una idea nomás. Ustedes pueden sacar sus ideas propias. No ¿Okay? sé. Pero una, unas lluvias cuando están cayendo se hacen muy buenas. Se hacen buenas. Ajá. Pero vienen más o menos en esta forma. Sí. Bueno, vamos a poner unas bolas acá arriba porque así comienza, ¿no? Uh -huh. Comienza así, redondita, y luego al rato se forma en la... Así como una lágrima. Se puede, ¿Sí? Pero ¿cómo se podría hacer fuego? Fuego. Tienen que usar la, la imaginación. Esto nomás es una ayuda, ¿verdad? Mira, ¿qué parece eso para ti? Parece como fuego. Como que está ardiendo un, un arbusto, leña o algo ahí, ¿verdad? Y luego las llamaradas salen más altas. Agarran la idea. Y luego la lumbre en veces tiene azulito. Le pones ahí el azulito, mira. Rojo y amarillo. Rojo, bueno, te sí, sí. rojo. Cuando tengas las dos cosas, tu historia escrita y tu arte, te vas a acordar más de lo que has escrito y ojalá y se acuerden más de las palabras que hemos estudiado, de la idea de los indios de Mesoamérica. The students seem to take a lot of pride in knowing that their ancestry, their culture goes back as far back as 6,000 years. And there's a big tie into that because they know that um, the people were here for many many years uh, living uh, on this land working the land Sometimes the kids will ask me, uh, well, can I do this? You can do anything. They say, well, can I cut here? You can cut there and here and anywhere you want. One day, I'm walking down a hall. Some of our students came up to me and just drove me into their classroom. Every one of them was all excited. The teachers were excited. And when they showed me a PowerPoint demonstration, at first I thought it was the teacher that did it. But then the teacher made it clear that the students did the whole project. And this is from what she had learned and shown the children, and then they in turn did it. I see their eyes light up now that we do activities. I don't think I would have reached as many kids as I reach now, because I think they're learning in a bunch of different ways now with the kids' hands on program. I see them engaged all the time. You know, they're all working together. Before, I would stand up in front of the class and I would teach. You never know if you have 100% of your class paying attention. I look around now, they're all working together. They're in groups of four or five. And it's nice because they'll say, come on, you know, if so-and-so is not participating, they get each other working together. Before, the learning I felt was more passive. The students weren't interacting with one another and with the teacher. And now it is problem solving. It is critical thinking. It is them constructing their own learning. And it has made a tremendous difference. I just kind of stand back and facilitate. And I like that. I didn't think I would. But I really do because I see them learning more with me being a facilitator. Going into my classroom and seeing the enthusiasm of the students as well as the teachers. It's not a, oh, I have to go to science, oh, I have to go to math. It's the hands-on experiences, the things that they do now that it is fun and without the students realizing that they're learning. And I think it's been a beautiful accomplishment.